introduce you to Robert Earl. How you doing, Robert Earl? Fine, fine. Miami Contingent. You wrote this book, and also you're a native of Miami. Tell us a little bit about the book first. Well, the book, the book is about is about a family in Miami, a dysfunctional family, and it's about the real Miami. Not it's not about the palm trees or the or the mansions or the beaches. You know, everything is usually portrayed when they say Miami is so glamorous and, you know, this isn't a postcard. This is the other side of the track postcard. Yeah. That's why the cover's like that, you know. It's a, it's a compelling, uh, gripping uh, tale that, that will keep you, like, um, it's almost like the book is spellbinding because you can't put it down. And that's what happened to me when I was reading it. Yeah, if you uh, if you Google it on Amazon.com or whatever, you see the review. People saying I hit it out the park, and and one woman said it's juicy, and one woman said that it's it's it's, it's she hasn't read a read a book like this in twenty years, and that she can write a book on how good the book was, you know? Right. And and some Jewish woman from her name Reiserman, she said that you have to live this life to to be able to write like that, which is true. You know? Well, you know, the the stories about drugs and also people living in Overtown in Miami. Now, did you live that type of life or yeah. or you knew those type of people back then? Yeah, I was, or today. Yeah, I was actually I was born in Baltimore, but then I came to Miami. I came to Miami in the eighties. I was on the run. I was on the run from the law when I came in and I, right. I was I was I had a drug habit. And the police was looking for me, and drug dealers was looking for me, so I just came and fit right in the overtime because that was like a drug capital, mm -hmm. you know. It was like another home, and uh, and I met these people. These people are a compilation of the people I met and lived in my life over the past years, from New York, Philly, Miami. Just I just was able to comp compile different lifestyles together to form these characters, you know? Right. They, because they very complex and I kept them real. Everybody in the book has a different personality and and, and I, I had to keep changing and changing because I wasn't gonna put nothing out that was whack. People want realness. Right. Now, uh, have you always tried to expire to be a writer? Well, when you were younger or now you just say, hey, let me do it now? I tried to write this book in 2000. I tried to write this book in the year 2000, but life got in the way and I put it down. And finally I picked it back up in 2012 and then the story started telling itself because by, by the year 2012, I had experienced a lot more. I had met different people who I could incorporate into the book, like Fuad. I, had, I met a dude, Fuad, in uh, Egypt. When I went to Egypt in 2000, and I put him in my book, as mm -hmm. a, you know. Put and, the name in there. Yeah, yeah, so. I put the, yeah, I put the name and the type of character, you know, personality. Yeah, he owned the store there. Yeah, and I, know we're yeah I met an Egyptian guy in, in, uh, in, in Egypt in 2012 when I went on a trip. And he was an interesting character. When I got back, I thought about it, but I used him. So life had gotten away, but then the book started, the story started telling itself, mm. you know. Oh, that, that's good, man. Now, also, one of the characters I really like, well, there's a few characters that I really like, was this character named Money. Tell us a little bit about Money. Well, you know, a lot of writers, a lot of black writers, they, 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 they too woman friendly today. You know, they, they betray black men weak and, you know, black men that cry in the dark and all that, you know. I, you got some black men who don't cry, you know, because life done beat them down and they, you know, they just, Kind of hard, or and 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 the the guy money. He's a complex person. Yes, you know he complex. He just like a real person, like everybody. Everybody got a dark side, a, a, a light side, and, and and they do good, they do bad. He's he more like a like a anti-hero. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, he, he do what he think he has to do to make it, and. You know, that's that's how a lot of people live, you know. Well, you know, one thing I found compelling about Money Jenkins was that he was very smart. He knew, let's say, uh, when to fold them and when to hold them. I'm going to use that cliche. <laughs> he knew how to get out well, and how yeah. to sneak back in. Yeah, yeah, but well, we don't want to give the story away. Well, no, we're yeah. not giving the story. Right. I'm just talking about his character, how yeah. smart he is. 
Yeah. You gotta make the right moves. Yeah, you know, well he learned that from the government. He went he was in the army. And then he learned from his father, shipyard. The shipyard, man, that's another interesting character. In fact, I like to see more about shipyard. Yeah. I really enjoyed his father's shipyard. Right, right, right. This I mean, you know, all these characters, they had inner turmoils. You know, that's how come they seem so real because they wasn't no one dimensional. They was three dimensional characters. They was going through different they was going through problems on the outside and on the inside, you know, and and that's how what we want when you write. You have to make your characters appear real. Now, as a writer, uh, did you study to be a writer? Did you go to school? Or tell us a little bit about that. Actually, nobody can teach you how to write. They can only teach you how to rewrite. They can they they can hone the skills that you already have because you you, you know you got a gift you know like God gave you a gift and and what what you do is you get understand another gift you learn you learn the the techniques and what the you know what to use you might be doing it naturally but you don't have a handle you don't know the name of what you're doing like you don't know that you're doing like you po uh, polarizing you know making uh, polarization or catharsis, you putting it in a story, you, you don't know what you're doing, but, but you're doing it naturally. So I went to school, I went to UM to take a writing class, and they honed up the skills, gave me a book, The Writer's Journey, and I absorbed that book. And I said, oh, that's what I'm doing. You know, you learn about different arts types. And, and show you how to put it in place, and so. Uh, they, they, tell you, they tell you the techniques, they tell you, tell you the, the, the writer's journey, the st different stages, you know, and you can incorporate that. In a, there's only three stories that have been told. All stories, nothing but three stories, two or three stories that have been told. All of them had, all of them had exactly. the, same, the same ingredients. You just have to do it, put it, you check it, switch it up, mix it up. But all of them have, either they have an antagonist, a hero, a villain, a mentor, you know, the archetypes, the shadows, you know different arts types and different stages in the journey. You, know, you show the, the uh, ordinary world where, the, you know, when the, where they live in the ordinary, then it's a call to adventure, then they reject the adventure, then they have to cross the threshold. And, you know, it's just different stages in, 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 in the journey of that story and in life. But what you did though, you said, well, you know, let me at least put my skills together, harm my skills. And find some way for someone to, to really direct me, yeah, right. something to direct me, so I can complete the task that you want to do. Right, right. I, I, I took a writing class, and and it's a group of writers, you know, mm -hmm. aspiring writers down in UM, seniors, citizens, and all of us. We just got together and we would write and critique each other's uh, work. I didn't never tell them I was writing a story. I would write other stuff. Some of the story I put in for the class and write other things for the class. Yeah, yeah, and I'd change up different things. I never gave them the story, but I wanted to see what they had to say. And they all loved my writing because I just was I be, I was myself. I just said, you know what? I, I put it out there and I kept it raw. And one guy, he told me in the class, named Gil, he said, Man, I like it, but only you can get away with this. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's another, uh, two other characters in the book, uh, Marcel and her daughter, Renee. One thing I enjoyed about Marcel, that she saw something in her daughter, and she wanted her daughter to be the best that she can be. Now, I was glad that you added that in the book. So how did you come up with that part? Because I know real people that's, that want that. That's what most black women or all women you know regardless of yeah but a lot of women or a lot of family members mothers and fathers do not uh do that to their kids when they see them that they have a gift they just let them go on and do what they want to do they don't direct them well, into trying to be the best that they can i, I know i i wanted to i want I, it's, it's a story and i wanted to bring out the best and the worst in this woman you know, and myself. Yeah, yeah. I, see, because everybody has that. Everybody got the good and they got the bad in them. And I wanted that to be, I wanted to give her some kind of redeeming qualities. Right. Well, you did with that, especially with her daughter, Renee. Yeah, yeah. You know, even the most wickedest person in a story should have some kind of redeeming qualities for the audience to relate to. 
you know, and grab a hold of. Right. You know, you can't hate, hate her utterly 100% hate her, you know. So I had to give her some redeeming qualities. And uh, I'm telling you, it took me two years that when I started writing again because of that, because I needed to keep it real. I mean, I had uh, to You did keep it real, bro. Now, another point, too, you, you also set uh, one of the settings with uh, Hurricane Andrew, which I lived through myself, yeah, right. and that really brought back memories and everything that happened afterwards and before Hurricane Andrew. Now, why did you select that point of history of Miami? Man, man you know, I'm going to tell you like this. I was inspired. I, 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 I had prayed and asked, you know, I, you know, maybe some people don't believe or don't find that. I, but I, I, I was inspired. I had prayed and said, you know, you wrote, I prayed and asked God, I said, you know, you wrote the book, you wrote 66 books of the Bible. All I need is just a little bit. So, so, some kind of way, it just came to me like gone with the wind. You know, like gone with the wind. It said during the Civil War. It said during the Civil War. Slavery and all. Yeah, so, so I wanted to have a historical backdrop and it was like symbolic of gone with the wind because Miami was gone with the wind after Hurricane Andrew, if you really think about it. And the way you wrote it in the book. After Hurricane Andrew, Miami was reborn. It was. You know, so 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 everything led up to that point in the book. And then that and then the and then all the new stuff, you know, it's like that's a, you know that's what I that's what I was trying to get across. Oh man, you really <laughs> got that across. And I and I went back and incorporated a little historical. I had to research, yeah, you did. Yes, research, you, know, you know about about uh, about McDuffie, Arthur McDuffie, you know riots and incorporated that in there. You know a lot of historical stuff is fiction, with reality mingled in with characters. You know, like Forrest Gump and all that, you know, right. stories that's like that. Style. Yeah, where, where it's reality happening, but it's fiction alongside of reality. I mean, uh, alongside of reality and fiction together. You, can, you know? So. I enjoy that type of writing and I enjoy that type of fiction because then I can relate to it more and it makes it more interesting to me because, right. hey, I know this, I know that. Right, right. So you say now you can buy your book at uh, Amazon.com. Amazon.com, BarnesandNobles.com, Archway Publishing uh, is is in some stores like uh, Books and Books down in, in Carl Gables and, and, and on the beach. And it's in Barnes and Nobles over at uh, the shops of Primbrook Gardens um, where I'm having a book signing. You know, I don't know when it's going to come out, but I'm having But you've been to a lot of book signings. Yeah, you've been yeah. That's great, right. man. Good publicity. Right. I went back to, they called me and I went back to school to Overtown, which was appropriate. Mm -hmm. They called me to come to Overtown and talk to the kids. Wow. You know, and, and pour into them because I wrote a story about Overtown and about the kids. And those are the kids who live in that life for real. And I went back and talked to them and... You know, told them they could be anything they want to be. Don't let nobody, you know, stop you. And told them about me. How I used to be over town on drugs and on crack. And look at me. You know, you can you can do whatever you want to do. As long as you want to change, yeah. and do what you want to do. Right, right. As long as you want to change, there's always hope until you get put in the ground. You can always change. Get some education. You know, and 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 better yourself. I say today. I said I want y'all not to waste twenty years of your life. Because in 10, 15 years, you can be a doctor, a lawyer, whatever, if you don't waste your time. You know, just get in that book, study, and do what you need to do. And look at me. I mean, you know, I... I you live the life, bro. Right. This Thank you very much. Ladies and great.